I'm going to show you how to shear scrape. So what is shear scraping? Uh, some people call it shear slicing or shear cutting. I tend to call it shear scraping. That's just how I learned it. But essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the edge of the bull gouge at a very steep angle to create a very fine finish shave or cut on the surface of the exterior of a wood bowl. But before we do anything, we really need to go sharpen the tool and make sure it's sharp before we shear scrape. Okay, so I need to set up the bull gouge in the Veragrind jig, and I'm setting the depth of the protrusion to two inches. This is a, um, this is a homemade depth gauge, and I have the plans for this in my shop on my website. Go to tornawoodbull.com forward slash shop, and you can check this out. Now I'm going to sharpen this, the wings of this. If you look here, you can see how how rough that edge is. I've been turning this ash bowl and it is, is roughed up this edge really well. What I want is that bevel to be smooth and clean all the way around up to the tip of the, uh, the cutting edge. If you want to learn more about sharpening all of your tools for wood bowl turning, check out my tool sharpening for wood bowl turning e-course. You can go to my website, turnwoodbull.com and click on courses at the top. Okay, I've got a little edge right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, I've got a little edge that still needs to be smoothed out, so I'm not quite done. And that looks good. I'm, I'm clean all the way up to the top edge of the bull gouge, and that's what we're going to need to do the shear scrape. Before we go much further here, I need to share with you what kind of bull gouge I have here. This is a 5 8 inch bull gouge. That means the shaft of the bull gouge is 5 8 of an inch wide. The flute is half an inch across. And I have a 55 degree front bevel with swept back wings. Now the wings are swept back about one and a half times the width of the bull gouge itself. This is called a swept back uh, grind or swept back profile. Now it's these swept back wings that are going to act as our shear scraping tools for this particular cut. Now, as you know, this is kind of my go-to bull gouge. I have the 5 8 inch version of this and I have a half inch version of this and these are the two that I prefer to use. The reason I use, I love to use these is the fact that I can do basically all the types of cuts I need to complete a bull from start to finish with the one tool. We need to think about the different ways that we're cutting when we're at a bull blank. If we're coming in at a 90 degree angle, we're just essentially scraping the surface at about a 90 degree angle. You can test these. This is kind of a neat little trick that you can do, is you can just put your tool up there and hand rotate the, the bowl around. And you can see this is taking a lot of effort to, to turn that and to cut into that wood because it's, it's working against the grain so much. Now, when we're doing a push cut, we divide that that energy and that effort by rotating the tip of the bull gouge to the side so we're not hitting it bluntly and straight on and then we also drop the handle a bit so we're kind of shaving it's almost like whittling so look at how much look how much effort that takes it's much less than the previous cut that I was doing and it just it just lightly goes through there now it's not cutting quite as aggressively but that's fine we just have to move a little bit slower when we're doing it so that's kind of the principle that's going on with the shear scrape. What we're doing is we're dividing that impact into the wood and we're not making it dramatic. What makes this cut so different is we're actually turning the face of the bull gouge or the flute of the bull gouge into the bowl itself. And it's going to be almost closed to the, to the surface of the bowl and we're going to be scraping with the lower wing only. Now the angle of the bull gouge is very steep and I'm going to back this up so you can see this really clear in just a second. It's really steep so what's happening is that wood is just going by at 
about a 45 degree angle and it's only going to be getting scraped with this lower wing. It's not bevel supported. It's just basically scraping it. That's why we call it, call it a shear scrape. But it's going to just very lightly shear off the top surface and this cut is really used for refining. You're not going to want to try to do this to rough out a bowl. You're going to use this cut to refine the surface of a bowl and we're going to do it right here to clean up these, these marks and stuff that we just made. Okay, so normally we keep the tool rest close to the surface of the bowl blank. However, when we're doing a shear scrape, we can, we're going to pull the tool rest back a bit so we get more of a 90 degree supported angle with the tool. The tool is going to be up a little bit higher than center and that's fine. And if you notice, I'm going to be holding the bowl gouge down at an angle. I actually have the butt of the bowl gouge on my hip here. I'm going to be holding down with my left hand to keep the tool up against the surface just like I normally would. But I'm going to be making just a sliding cut. I'm basically just flexing my knees and shifting my weight from left to right. Let's take a look at how this looks. Just making a really light move here that's not, it's not trying to, again, we're not trying to remove a bunch of material, we're just smoothing the top surface. And here's a good indication that you're doing it right. You're going to get these really fine shavings that come off it. They're, they're light and they're thin, just little fine hairs almost that come off of there. Some people call them angel hairs. Nice thing about this too is because it's making such a light cut, we can move back and forth even going against the supported grain. If you're not familiar with supported grain cuts, check out my video on which direction to cut with a bull gouge and it teaches you all about what a supported grain cut is. But what's cool about this again is we don't have to worry about that because we can move back across, back and forth across the surface without pulling up the ingrain fibers and causing problems. Okay, so let me show you up close what the tip of the bull gouge is doing. You could literally close the flute right up against the surface of the bull gouge and just open the top wing a touch. If for some reason that top wing touches, it's not going to be a problem. It's just going to scuff up the surface maybe a little bit, but it's not going to catch. What we're doing is we're just lifting that edge just a touch and then letting it scrape. Let me show you. When you're hearing that squeaking sound, you want to put a little more down pressure with your left hand on the tool to the tool rest. Okay, now I'm going to get a little more aggressive and I'm going to shear scrape that groove out of there so we have a nice smooth surface versus that, that indentation we made initially. Now, if I take the tool and I lift the handle, then I'm getting closer to a scraping cut, and that's going to be more aggressive, and it's going to probably have ingrained tear out. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep it elevated so that I'm getting that sheer angle that's making a nice light scrape or sheer shaving, basically, is what it's doing. All right, and we've almost got that groove out of there, but we've got the shape is not rounded. I've got this, this bump that's here. So what I'm gonna do is I need to keep the 
tool rest about a 90 degree angle to where I'm working. So I really can't do the shear scrape here very easily because I've got the tool rest at almost a parallel angle. The tool rest needs to be positioned and you're going to work just kind of a small area at first and then you need to reposition so you have that 90 degree support underneath you. And now you can see I'm, I'm almost 90 degrees to the tool rest and I can work this area now. Okay, so now I'm getting the shape of the bowl closer to what I want. I've got this really unusual bark enclosure and this negative space in here, which I kind of like that actually. It gives a lot of character to this piece. This was actually a, a nail I just removed. All kinds of fun stuff. This is a piece of ash. Anyway, so that's how you do a shear scrape. Shear scrape's designed for cleaning up the surface at the end of a bowl. Okay, so that's the shear scrape. Now keep in mind, this can be done with different types of profiles. This is again is a 55 degree bevel swept back profile. And this is what I personally like to use. You can do it with a fingernail grind. You can do it with a variety of other profiles as well. You're going to need to have some kind of wing there to use as a shearing and a scraping mechanism. But if you've got a different profile, it, you could try it out with that. If you want to learn more about shaping and sharpening bowl gouges and all of your bowl turning tools, go check out my tool sharpening course. It's linked in the description below. So keep that in mind. And remember, this is not a roughing cut. Do not do this where you've got a rough exterior because obviously you're putting the gouge in somewhat of a vulnerable position. If something, if you have a big piece of, you know, bark or something, that comes over the top. You're going to get a, you're going to get a nasty catch. This is a refining cut. Think of this as like shaving and doing the smoothing, finishing cuts on the exterior of the bowl. Don't try this on the interior of the bowl because the bowl gouge at that angle inside the bowl, you could get a nasty catch. Inside the bowl, you could use a round nose scraper or a negative rake, rake scraper. And I've got another video that's coming on that. And so you want to check that out. But remember, don't use this on the inside of the bowl. This is only for refining cuts on the exterior of a wooden bowl. I can tell you when I was first introduced to this technique, I was not comfortable with it and it didn't come natural at first because it's kind of backwards to everything you've been doing with the bull gouge to that point. So just practice it a little bit and, and get familiar with it. Don't, don't get too upset about it at first, but try it several different times and just work small areas. Remember to keep your tool rest at about a 90 degree angle so you have good support. Put down pressure on the tool into the tool rest so it's, it's well supported and have it supported up against your hip as you're turning and you're going to be fine. Just go slow with it and make light shaves. And remember, you start getting that really nice smooth dust, a little hair dust of it, then you're doing it right. So this is a really, really great technique to have in your arsenal of tricks when you're turning a wood bowl. And it's a great way to have a beautiful finish on your bowl without using any sandpaper. Yeah, you're going to want to sand it, but you can start like at 180 or 240 when you start doing this, the shear scraping really well, because you're going to leave that surface really, really smooth. All right, guys, I hope you liked this. And if you did, do me a huge favor. Click that like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribing. And leave me a comment. Have you already been doing the shear scraping technique with a bull gouge like this? Or if you haven't, are you willing to give it a try now that you've seen this? So leave me a comment below. I'd be curious to find out what you think of shear scraping. Thanks for watching. And like always, until next time, happy turning.